Thank you, Isaac. This is Becky Mayer, and this is Transitions, Body, Mind, Spirit. Transitions, we've all been in transitions in our life, right? I like to use a metaphor of triathlons, something I've been doing about 12, 13 years. And when a triathlon, first you get and you swim. And then you get to the transition area, take off your goggles, get on the bicycle, and then you bike. And then the next thing, you run. So that's a great metaphor for what happens in our life. How do we change from one thing to another to another? And today we have an amazing guest to tell us about how she got here. Marcella Panuya, thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Becky. Yes. Very happy to be here. I was gloriously happy to see you play with a whole band orchestra at the winery just a few days ago. And how do you describe the music that you, you do here? Well, I think it's a variety of uh, genres. I perform with my band, and with them we perform uh, different types of music. It's fusion, which is based in Latin music, but it also has certain influences from of flamenco and a little jazzy here and there. So we also play this thing that I've been calling salsa rumba. I, salsa I, rumba? I came up with that word because it's salsa with rumba flamenca. So it's like ah. this hybrid thing. But I also do collaborations like you were mentioning at the city winery. I was performing with the Nashville Salsa Machine, yeah. which is a, a band uh, that was organized by Rasan Barber, this great saxophonist. Yeah. And um, you saw it, it was 13 of us, all from different bands, playing salsa. Yes, and then people were dancing, and it was an amazing electric type of uh, gathering of people and the music, and you were swaying, and it was really a beautiful thing. It was really nice. I really liked it, because it's, it's not easy to find a place where you can fit such a big band that mm -hmm. the sound, you know, will be good for it. And then the dance floor was amazing, mm -hmm. right? It was really good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, th I think we're going to do that again. Yes. That's well, I think it's so fascinating that you were raised in Bogota, Colombia. That's right. But did you not tell me, uh, when did you first have an inkling that music was going to be such a big part? How old were you? Well, I, f I think always. I think always. My mom told me that I sang before I was able to talk. When I was, uh, I was born in November, so a year later in December, I learned the carols to sing, and those were like my first songs. So I was caroling, but I couldn't really talk. <laughs> And uh, so I think, I think that music was always a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And I performed first when I was five in school. And, uh, you know, like always singing here and there. Mm -hmm. Used to write songs and do songs, like, you know, wherever I have to do my chores. It's like, I'm washing dishes, but I, whatever. And uh, then, but when I was 14, I became like a professional singer, if you can call that, because it became my main thing, my main activity. And I just started making a living out of it. Since I was 14, never stopped. It's so in, in Colombia, when you're 14, are you playing in, in uh, bars? Or where, where do you where I was did you playing, perform? initially was in hotels, in like, uh, yeah, like private events. Mm -hmm. My first uh, event was a wedding which I thought was so neat because I got to sing for their first dance. And I thought, how neat. You get to be part of these people's special day. Mm. And then afterward, different events. We used to work a lot with the, um, how you say that in English? It was like the army, the retirement division of the army. Mm. So we used to play the, for their parties, their gatherings, like you know, birthdays or whatever gathering. We were the band. So mm -hmm. that was good. Wow. Yes, and then yes. somehow or other, as you matured, you were recognized for doing what you do, and you left and started playing in different parts of the world. Tell us about that. Yes, that was a year later, a year after I started singing. Yeah, like a year and a half. We were playing at this place, and it was actually a, a just luck. You know, I, I really believe in destiny because I think that sometimes when you're meant to do something, it's mm -hmm. like it just happens the one world way or another. Yes. yes. Um, my, the band got an offer to go to Malaysia, 
Malaysia. Yes, yeah, so there was a, a, a place that was going to be open there, and they wanted a Latin band that could play Latin music and some Brazilian music, too, Latin music. And um, they were going to go without me because I was so little, right? So nobody thought about asking me to go. And they had another singer, but, the, but it was my band. So we had rehearsed for, I don't know, a year and a half. And then the guy requested a song, and they all look at each other and were like, well, Marcella sings that song. Who's Marcella? And I was there at the corner just looking at them, you know, because they were doing the video. So I came on stage, and I sang the video. They sent the video to Malaysia. Then after a few days, the word came back and said, like, okay, we won the band, but we won the girl that was at the end. Ah. So they had to put me in because the guy, so that's how it happened, but I was not really planning on going and then I have to figure it out the school like if I was going to do my own schooling there and How so I had to you? take tests 15. You were 15? I turned 16 when I was there. Okay. But I was, I guess that you could say I was responsible <laughs> and they were like, okay, let's do it. And my mom, I prepared a PowerPoint presentation. You did her, a PowerPoint? So I, could, I could tell her why I, I was, why she needed me to go. Like, you know, she that's was meant incredible. to let me go. <laughs> I, I, you know, I wanted to go. Like, but Malaysia, that sounds amazing. Wow. So how did you handle the schooling thing? So I would just wake up early and read. I like to read, so I would just, learn. and the guys, the, the band members, I mean, they were really good. They were oh. very nice to me, and they all took care of me like I was the, the baby, and Aww. and they really, they explained to me things, and it, it was nice. And it they was protected a nice you because you're yes. out in public. You're 15. Yes. Yeah. It was good. You know, in Malaysia, people are very respectful and stuff, so I never had a bad experience or anything. And were you in Kuala Lumpur? Kuala Lumpur, yes. Okay. Yeah, because I've been to Borneo, but uh, I had not been to Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. I keep on hearing about it. Yeah. yeah. So how long were you there? I was there for like three months okay. about that. And then I went back home. And then after a, a, a few months, I think, or a year, I don't know, I'm kind of bad telling time, like it could be a month or a year. But, but I was 17, then another band called me. They were going to Jakarta, to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So I went touring with them for a few months to then I came back home and I just started singing with other bands too because up to that point it had only been um, th that band. It was mm -hmm. called Nueva Epoca. So I just started singing with different bands and started exploring like the jingles world mm. and uh, doing background vocals for people too for about three years. Mm -hmm. And then I, I went to Malaysia again, traveling, and then I was like, you know what, I, I think I want to stay here for a while. <laughs> and then, In and Malaysia? Then I, yes. And then that was, that was when I moved to Southeast Asia. I just decided to stay there and, and explore. Mm -hmm. I really like to travel. Yeah, it sounds know, like, like it. Like so Southeast Asia, and then uh, you went to China too? Yes, yes. Okay. After that, in Malaysia, the, the percussion was state as well, and he got an offer in China, and they were looking for a singer, so he recommended me and sent a video, and they liked it, so they flew me there. Mm -hmm. And I was living in China for a while, and then came back to Malaysia, and Singapore, and then China again, and then the Philippines. and. Yeah, and meanwhile, you just kind of do shows around, like Indonesia and Brunei, and just move in, the, in that area. Wow. You, you speak of these, to, to my ears, it sounds so um, uh, wild and interesting and <laughs> exotic and everything. Uh, did yeah. it just kind of become old hat for you after a little bit? Or? Uh, well, they're, they're very exotic, and you always find fascinating things. But at one point, I think that what, what I felt, though, it was on how, at the beginning, we were so different, right? Like, I could see, like, they eat different things. They like this. They don't like that. And, but at one point, it just became very, we're so similar. Mm. Like, I would meet people in every country, and they will have their families. They want their best for their babies. They want to work. They want to be happy. They wish they could travel. And to them, Colombia is exotic, right? Like, oh. I'm in China, and it's exotic. But then to them, South America is exotic. And I, so that was really neat, because mm -hmm. I feel that it's only something that you get to experience when you travel, to connect with that people at that level that we're all humans, and we want the same at the end of the day. You mm -hmm. know, we want to be happy. So. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, there was always something fascinating about the food or something like, are you going to eat that? Especially <laughs> in China. <laughs> like, really? Yes. So. 
Wow. So tell us how, I thought it was an interesting story, China and learning the language, how you ended up coming to Tennessee. I, I was studying on my, maybe it was my fourth uh, trip to China. Fourth. Um, I, I was studying Chinese. I was there, I went to the university too, mm -hmm. and I was studying Chinese, and then I met a Memphian. A Tennessee boy, a and Memphi I fell in love with him from Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis. Good old Memphis. And how, of all things, did you meet a Memphis boy in China? Well, we were classmates. We were in this uh, Chinese class, and it was about seven of us, and then eventually everybody just started quitting. It was, it was hard. I mean, this is learning the learning Chinese the language. Mandarin, yes, Mandarin. Wow. And of course, you, in Bogota, you speak Spanish. Spanish. And then you yes. speak English very, very well. English, thank you. And in China, <laughs> you're trying to learn Chinese. But, you know, out of necessity. Like, like people ask me, oh, you're so smart. No, it's just out of necessity. It's like they throw you in a pool, and if you don't swim, then you sink. It was so hard. I thought when I learned English, I thought that everybody spoke English and that with that, I was ready to travel the world. Then I get to China and they didn't understand me. I couldn't order food, I couldn't take a taxi. One day I was like, stop, stop, and he didn't know what stop meant. Huh. And you're like, so I have to wait in the traffic light and jump out of the car. Oh. Like, look at the, at the <laughs> taxi man and just, your money, and jump out of the car. So I felt like, no, I cannot do this. So I learned an art of necessity in, in, in that class. Everybody just started quitting. It was like probably that the third level because that was my fourth trip. So it was like a little advanced class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And everybody just quit. And then one day, it was just the two of us. So we talked like, hey, did you do your homework? Yeah, I did. What about you? And then we just became friends. Wow. And we fell in love. And we ended up, we lived in the Philippines for a while. Mm -hmm. And we ended up marrying in Singapore. We lived there also for like two years uh -huh. uh, before we came to the States. I see. That's the idea, love, the things we do for love. Yes. Right. Wow, and of all things, there you meet your future partner in a Chinese class, and that takes you to Tennessee. To Tennessee. Yeah, I've never thought about coming here or living here or nothing. And you know, it's funny. There's a funny story how I ended up in China. I was in Malaysia singing under a contract. Then I flew to Singapore and I was going to go home for a few weeks to take a vacation. I was flying to Paris. And then I went and I decided, you know what? I always transit in Europe because I don't know, I was just not a fan of the States. Please don't hate me. <laughs> you know, you hear so many things. I've never, so uh, I decided, I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm going to travel this time when I, back, mm -hmm. when I get back through the States. I'm going to transit there. I go, I travel so many countries, like asking for any visa, you know, like what's the problem? Hey, I need to stop in your country for a second. No, you cannot do that. Why? <laughs> so she's like, no, you have to apply for your visa either in your country, your home mm -hmm. country, or in your country of residency, with, which is Malaysia. And to me it was like, what? Like, I mean, mm. so I was kind of upset and I was like, I just need to breathe your air and touch your ground for a few minutes and then I'm going to get in another plane and I'm going to go. Right. They didn't give it to me. So because of that, right. I decided to go to China for a few oh. months before going home. And then I meet my husband and then I became a citizen. Isn't that funny? A citizen of? Of the U.S. Oh. I mean, after so many years. I've been here for many years, for seven years. Oh. But it's funny. Isn't that funny? <laughs> wow. Wow. So here you are. You were in Memphis. Then you came to Nashville. Nashville, yes. Okay. And now you are actually writing in uh, a, a well-known Nashvilleian, uh, Victor Wooten. Yeah. You've been doing some wonderful things with him. Yeah. Uh, the Wooten brothers. And tell us about what you're writing and what kind of music you are creating. You. Me. Okay. The writing yeah, it's been something relatively new. I used to do it when I was a kid, like I, I was telling you. Mm -hmm. But then I, I stopped. I was doing covers. And I started doing in Singapore. Then it was more in Memphis. Then in Memphis, I got to record the, the first, the very first thing that I recorded in my life were done in Memphis. I did an EP, then I released a full record. Was this in, your own? Um, my own, yes. Your own songs? My own songs. That you yes. wrote? Yes. Wow. Yes. Nice. And um, I guess, okay, what I write, I write about things that inspire me. 
I, I write about, first it was about my personal stories, and the very first song that I wrote from that bunch of songs was for my mom. You know, just, mm. I remember what you did, I remember the, your sleepless nights taking care of me, and I gave it to her on her birthday. Aww. And then that just kind of started this whole process of writing and writing more about other things. and. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in Memphis, I thought, you know what, I need to do something with these songs. You know, at least record, it, record them and see what they sound like. Mm -hmm. And that's what brought the EP. Then I released a single called Un Mundo Bueno, which was tied up with an educational campaign to raise money for scholarships. And um, scholarships for what? For Latinos. Uh, the, the Latin kids, when they finish high school, not many of them get to go to college. Is this in Colombia? No, here oh. in the States. Oh. Yeah. They don't get to go to college mm -hmm. because of their uh, migration status. So I thought it was very sad that kids had to go to work when they were still teenagers. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? Kids need to be kids. So. Mm -hmm. What what can I do? And I, I had already written the song, and I and I had thought, you know what, this song is about world peace, and I recorded with a bunch of little kids who are so cute, <laughs> and um, I thought we need to do something. So we donated that towards that cause, and uh, and then my album came. And while I was doing my album, many musicians came to the to to the picture. Like I just met them, we connected, and we started writing together. We record mm -hmm. together, and one of them was Victor that you was, were mentioning. Okay. And so we wrote a song for, for the record. Mm -hmm. well, Kirk Whalen was also there. Elston Torres, just you know, it, it was really neat. And are these so all in English or Spanish? Uh, it's or half both? in English and half in Spanish. Okay. Yes. And what I've been writing lately has been more in Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been releasing singles, and we are preparing to release some more. We released uh, two last year, and we're going to release more this year. Okay. Like just stories inspired by love. By uh huh. Love. The songs are stories inspired by love. By love, yeah. Not necessarily romantic love, uh -huh. but love. Love, love for love. yourself. Love for somebody else. Love for what you do. You know that. Mm -hmm. It sounds like there's a real spiritual component in all this too, uh, awakening in yourself spiritually. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think so. I think that I started this process. It was in China, and then when I went to Singapore, it mm -hmm. kind of just really uh, intensified. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like you know, just get to because I was singing for so long, but I started so young that I never really mm. stopped to think about what do I do what I do like and, and to you know fell really in love with music at one point it becomes like autopilot you just sing because that's what you do right so I think in Singapore it became that and I just started wondering like who are we why are we here like mm -hmm. so that that inspired a lot of a lot of things in myself and I think that that really activated my creativity to and to write songs there is a song that I wrote that is called claim your power that's one of my favorites in my record. And it talks about that, like, you know, about you as an individual, about you making a mark mm -hmm. here for all of us, for this to be better. How are you making a difference? If, if you're not really trying to make a difference, then what, what are we doing? Is so that song in English and in Spanish? That one is in English. Oh, the, the songs are only like, you know, the ones that are in Spanish are in Spanish, the ones that are in, in English are in English. I think there's only one that has both, that is called Juntos, the one I recorded with Victor that has a little part in English. But apart mm -hmm. from that, they're only like, you know, either either or. Mm -hmm. Have you found that the in, in uh, Nashville, that the Latin community is listening to you versus, or just everybody listens to you, whether they're Latin or they're not or it's a real mixed bag? I think it's a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people like Latin music and they are not necessarily Latinos, but they do like Latin mm -hmm. music. They like to dance or they like to listen. And of course the Latinos like it too. So I think it's, it's very mixed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Di diverse. <laughs> yeah. And then do you have plans to travel even more? Didn't you just get back from Dubai? I did. That sounds incredible. That was really neat. What I hotel were you performing the, there? At the Royal Le Meridian. I was Le doing Le the Meridian? Royal Le Meridian. Uh -huh. I was uh, performing for New Year's Eve for their, their party, New Year's Eve wow. celebration. 
Yeah. It was nice. It's amazing what they did with the desert. You forget completely that you're in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert. Wow. It's amazing. It's really imp an impressive place. And I got to be there for 14 days, which is nice. I only performed one night, but oh. I got to travel the rest nice. of the night. That was nice. Yes. Yeah. Very and sweet it, of them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is there other parts of the world that you have a yearning, you feel you're being called to? I mean, you've been all over. Oh, uh, yes. Is there any place you haven't been yet? Oh, yeah, many, oh. many, and I want to go. Oh, there are many places that I like. I, I would love to visit Argentina. Mm. I would love to visit Spain. Uh, hopefully, we'll do it this year. There have been talks about going on tour in the summer, so mm -hmm. we're going to you know, try to make that happen. We haven't really finalized the details, but I think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're really close. And uh, France, I would love to go to Paris, and I'm going next month. So oh, it's going to be like a dream come true next month. I'm very, very excited about that. So will you be performing in Paris, I'm too? I'm going to be performing in Nice. Nice. Nice, yes. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, but mainly, I mean, when I when all started was for pleasure. Was because I wanted to do the vacation. Mm -hmm. My best friend Marcella came uh, and told me, "Oh, there is this carnival, the masquerade carnival, something. You want to go?" And I'm like, "Yes, let's go, let's do it." And then after that, then my friend Philippe, he lives there, and then we started talking, and one thing led to another. Uh, yeah. But wow. Wow. Very excited. Well, all this talk about. You singing, we okay. want to hear you sing. All right. And uh, I think we'll be setting up shortly here. Let's do uh, it. Let's do it. That'll be great. And uh, the the name of your company is Isaac. Isaac Iker. Yes. Isaac Iker, and I think we're just about ready to uh, set up in just a little minute and tell us a little bit about the song you're going to sing. Okay. This song is called Juntos. It's Juntos. On, on my record and my album that I released in 2013. Uh -huh. um, I love that song. I think it's very pretty, it's very romantic, and I'm very happy that Isaac is here to perform with me. I've been very lucky to meet all these wonderful musicians here in Nashville. I love the band. I call them Los Muchachos, which means uh, the guys in, the guys. Uh, in Spanish, because you know, with Alia, I'm going with the guys. Oh, the guys, too, and the guys that, so Los Muchachos. Love them, they're so talented. Wow. And the song you're going to sing, is that in English? It's in Spanish mostly, okay. but and it has a section in, in English. And, and tell us again what it's about if we don't understand okay. Spanish. Uh, juntos. It talks about when you find that person that is just like so uh, perfect like for mm -hmm. you. When you're like, I feel I already know you and we just have this connection that we can describe. It's like unexplicable. Okay. It's really good. Yeah, so I wrote the lyrics. Actually, the, the melody is not mine. The melody right. is Victor's. And um, yeah, let's do Very good. Those. All right. Marcella and Isaac, coming up. Thank you. Si en esta vida pudiera yo pedir un deseo Lo que viene a mi mente es estar junto a ti Pues nada deseo más que poder estar cada día junto a ti En un molde hecho para mí Así te siento Has venido a brillar Una luz en mi existir Cautivas de mi amor Y mi corazón No me pude resistir Y ahora empezar a escribir la historia que tenga el tú y yo. Cada palabra la dictará el amor de nosotros dos. No lo creía, pero parece cierto que tu corazón me ama tanto como el mío te ama.
take my hand We're going to fly around the world Me with you You with me Free Cuánto tiempo esperé y al fin te encontré Hoy te tengo Y se siente como que siempre has estado Anhelé, tan perfecto para mí Y ahora empezar a escribir la historia Que tenga él, tú y yo Cada palabra la dictará el amor de nosotros dos No lo creía, pero parece cierto Que tu corazón me ama tanto como el mío te ama I wish I could understand all of it, but it was just from the heart. Give you the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we can get your music online, right, on CD Baby? Oh, yes, CD Baby, iTunes, and uh, Google, and Amazon, and all the good stuff that we have now And available. your la latest is called what? Uh, okay, it's singles. The latest project is called Lo que el amor inspira, and it's singles that are just being released, you know, from time to time. They're, they will be on iTunes, they will be on my website too. We wanted to give a present to our fans, so we're putting them there first for free download for our loyal fans, and then they go on iTunes. Okay, and then uh, the, your website is called? MarcelaPinilla.com. Pinilla okay. is spelled P-I-N-I-L-L-A. Right. <laughs> well, we're going to put that on, uh, in case nobody got that, we're going to put it also on the, uh, on uh, our, our wonderful uh, credits. So, Marcella, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Isaac, thank you. Transitions, body, mind, spirit. Thank you.